Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about my top tools for diagnosing fuel injection systems and one little service tool, or a couple service tools. Alright, so the first tool that you're going to need, and you're going to need this because, I mean, you can have a vehicle run, it can be running, it can, you'll have all kinds of, okay, you want to check fuel pressure. All right, now here's why it's important. I've, I've met a lot of guys that say, oh, it shot across the engine compartment, or, you know, I pushed a Schrader and fuel came up. Now there's two reasons why you want to check fuel pressure and why it's so important. First example is I had a, a Mustang, special edition, I don't remember, mid 2000s, and this thing came in and it had codes and it ran rough. This thing was running on nothing but fuel fumes. I literally took the Schrader valve out of the fuel rail while it was running and it did not stall. It was running on enough fumes to keep it running. It wasn't running great, but it was running. And it had no liquid fuel in the fuel rail, period. But somehow it was enough to keep this engine running. Now, that's the first example of why you want to check fuel pressure. Now, the other important thing about fuel pressure and fuel volume is that Sometimes you can have proper fuel pressure and not fuel volume. So your pressure gauge has enough to read, but it doesn't have, but the vehicle doesn't have enough fuel to deliver the fuel. So you're gonna get, uh, a lot of times what you'll get is you'll have a, a lean codes on hard acceleration. You'll have a lack of power on hard acceleration because at idle, running around the shop, you know, revving it up, you don't really need a lot of fuel volume. You don't need fuel volume until you're mashing on it going down the road. Then you need an incredible amount of fuel. And if you don't have the volume, let's say you have a Ford with a PO171 to 174. You can put a fuel pressure gauge on there and your fuel pressure gauge will read 50, 55 PSI. But then you go drive it and you don't have enough fuel. And basically, that's still a fuel pump problem, but you have to determine that. These are why you need to make sure that you're checking fuel pressure and fuel volume. Now for checking fuel pressure, I have the Lyle Master Fuel Injection Test Kit. Now, I've had this for a long time. Comes with a manual, tells you what all the fittings are. Honestly, I've never used most of the connections in here, but it comes with this right here with all these different adapters for all different kinds of vehicles. Now this is a good set if you work on carbureted vehicles as well, because a fuel gauge starts reading at 5 PSI. Well, a carbureted vehicle is only going to operate on like 7 pounds of fuel pressure. So if you have 7 pounds of fuel pressure, this thing doesn't even show it. So the good thing about this set is this actually shows you this actually has a low fuel pressure right here. And this is for carbureted vehicles. This one goes up to 15 PSI. So now if you're, if you're down to you know, seven or eight PSI you're checking, you wanna use this, this gauge right here. I've had to use this probably about 10 times. I've had this for a long time. So the other thing that comes in this set is the gauge. And then you have the button here to release the fuel, okay? And it goes through this thing right here. Now the good thing about having a gauge that has this ability here is that you can put the other end of this hose in a container and push the button for five, seven, 10 seconds, whatever the test is, and measure the amount of fuel that comes out. Because um, some, some cases it will tell you to measure fuel volume and it will show you exactly how much you should have in a certain amount of time. Uh, for example, if you got a 5.9 Cummins, um, it has a lift pump on the engine and it has a, it has a, a, a sender in the, in the tank. Well, the fuel lift pump pulls the fuel from the tank and it supplies the injection pump. Well, that lift pump is common to fail and the way you test it is checking pressure and volume. You're supposed to have a certain amount of fuel in a certain, like 20 seconds or something. And it's very, very important that you check that. So that's why you wanna, that's why you wanna have a gauge like this. And then the other end is just gonna be a quick disconnect. So I have this, now what I use this for mostly it has a whole bunch of different fittings for checking out fuel filters and things like that. I don't use any of that very often. It's really difficult to check fuel that way. 
because uh, you're having to loop it around. A lot of times it's not, you know, it's not long enough. So I pretty much have the few that I use. I have the Ford adapter end, which is the little short shallow one. And then I have the GM, which is the longer one. Now these stay in my toolbox because I use these all the time. Uh, so you, you know, and then you just have your quick disconnect. Now the other thing that you want to get now, if you buy this set, it doesn't come with them. Um, OTC, I think the OTC set comes with it is you want to have a Okay, so the one thing that you're gonna to wanna to have is you're gonna want an adapter like this, where it has very, where it can get into a very small place. Uh, older Volvos, uh, the Schrader valve is, is in a spot like this. And if you don't have something like this, you can't get in there. Uh, and also six liter power strokes are hard to get in there. Um, and so I have, I have the adapter for that. So, so I have this long hose and basically all I did was I had to buy a, one that didn't work for my fitting and I had to grind it down so I can put a uh, so I can put a rubber hose on there. So then I have this fitting here which adapts to my fuel gauge and on the other end I have a GM and a Ford. And you want to have these so you can slip them on there and you can test fuel pressure when you can't get to it. Uh, So another tool that you want for testing, now this is only for a quick reference check. It's a lot easier to do this than it is to scope an injector just to see if an injector is firing. This would be if it wasn't starting and you're looking for injector pulse. Basically you're going to want one of these sets here. Now this has like an IAC tester, I've never used it before, um, but it has all these different, uh, different right here and they go into the different injector connectors. Basically all it is is a light bulb. So when, you, when you're cranking it over, this bulb will flash, indicating it has power and pulse to ground, and that the computer is turning on and off the injector. This is only a quick test. If you put one of these in and it didn't flash, then you know you don't have injector pulse. Now you just need to see if you have fuel pressure and things like that. Now another tool that you wanna get is you wanna get a tool that's like this right here, and this is for fuel pumps. This is for locking in the locking ring, because usually they're plastic, and hitting them with hammers, you end up just breaking them. Um, so you wanna get one of these. This is adjustable, so you can adjust it all the way in and out. Um, Ford escapes, dodges, things like that. A lot of times it's real hard to get in there. So you wanna have something like this that can get in there and you can put a ratchet on there and you can break that locking ring um, free and service the vehicle. Now, the other set that you wanna get is, now this is for servicing. You wanna get a set like this. This is uh, Matco, but I'm pretty sure this is Lyle. It's probably made by Lyle, but basically it's this set right here now this is a good set because it has several things in there, not just for fuel. Uh, so for the longest time, these are all I ever had and these are all I ever knew to use. And then eventually I found these guys here and I use these almost all the time. These work on so many different fuel systems, super important. Now the other good thing about this set is it has these two right here and these are for Ford transmission cooler line disconnects. And one time I had a Chevy that had a fuel filter and it was in a really bad spot and the line was so close to the filter that you couldn't get, you couldn't get a disconnect tool on that. So what you end up having to do is you have, is you end up having these two pieces here and then these slip up in behind the fuel line and then you slide this tool in like this, and that locks it in. And then that's how you take those out. So if you ever go to Chevy that you can't get the disconnect tool in, you need something like this. So strongly recommend a set like this. I think they have some newer ones that might have a few more pieces than this does. Uh, I've had that for a long time. Uh, also, I have this one here. I got lucky. I had a Subaru one time, a customer was going over the grapevine and their car broke down 
and their engine seized up. And they told Subaru to go ahead and replace the engine. Subaru basically had their engine ready to come out and they said, and the customer declined and said, never mind, leave it like it is, we're gonna tow it back to Sacramento. And the dealership had left this on one of the fuel lines. So I got this tool free, this works for Subarus and this works for I, I, Toyotas, I think I use it on Toyotas also. So one of those is a really good tool. And the last tool that I have, and I just used this today, and this originally came with like an old Ford fuel injector, is a rubber cone like this, or a plastic cone. Basically, this is for stretching O-rings to go over the fuel injectors. So you stretch your O-rings out, and you put this on top of the injector, and it brings it around the top hat without damaging the injector. I, I literally haven't used this in a while, and today, I, the, that little small little hat is real thin and you can break it and you can cut your o-ring so it's best to use something like this so you want to get you some of these if you ever come across these keep it and you're going to use it one day you're going to use it and you're going to be very thankful that you did so that is I thought I had something else I guess not I think that was all so that is my top tools for diagnosing fuel systems and also servicing them now remember to make sure that, oh, one, one tip for fuel volume is if you have a fuel gauge hooked up and you're able to pinch the return line, if it has a rubber hose, pinch it. And if you pinch it, the fuel pressure should peg up high. And that's a good way of telling that you have good fuel volume. It's not a, it's not a, a justifiable test, but it's just a quick test. Sometimes we have quick tests and all they are is to point us in a direction. Am I going after fuel volume? Scope your O2 sensors. Go wide open throttle. If your O2 is hit 900 millivolts, then you know you don't have a fuel volume issue because it wouldn't have enough fuel. Your fuel would drop off and your O2s would go lean. They should go to 900 millivolts when you're, when you're full rich or when you're full wide open throttle. So I hope you enjoyed these tools. If you don't have any, uh, let me know. I'm gonna uh, share a link in the description below for some of these tools. Uh, also, if you have any special tools that you like to use, feel free. I love tools. I love to. I love tools that do jobs that make things easier. So if I can find a tool that makes things easier for me, I'm all for it. So thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content. And check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.